Boy, if you've ever heard about the Google algorithm, you probably already feel overwhelmed. Today I'm going to break it down in easy to understand terms so that you can make your content super Googleicious. Do you ever feel like Google is just a big mystery? There's like there's some magic algorithm out there that only super geeks know. Well, I'm here to tell you it's really easy and I'm going to walk you through it right now. Google is just looking for thought leaders. That's it. Remember, Google was founded as a research project at Stanford to index professorial content and student content. They wanted all the most current content, not the old stuff, but the stuff that was in the moment that day, hyper relevant to that specific topic. So if we fast forward to today, it's just a massive library of the most current content. And of course, if I'm going to write a copy for a book, then of course I'm going to know where I put that book in the library. So let's talk a little bit about the Google algorithm because a lot of people I think are very confused by this. Think about it. So you guys may remember a bell curve, okay? So a bell curve. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at, at drawing. So what you want to think about is right in the middle of this bell curve right here is the top 10. Right here, okay? That's the top 10. Now I don't have time as a business owner, I don't have time to figure out what that top 10 is. I I'd spent years at Yahoo figuring out the algorithm and what do we have to do and la la la. Here's the deal, I'm just going to copy what's already working. So if I write, so let's just say that this right here is 1200 words. That's what it takes to be a page one contender. If I write less than that, say 600, nope. If I write more than that, say 2,500, no. Because the algorithm has already been established for the top 10. So I need to look like this, I need to look like that guy. Remember the cool kids in high school? Maybe you weren't a cool kid, I wasn't. <laughs> but you knew where to sit in the lunchroom, you got to sit in the back of the bus, you had the right sandwich, you knew exactly what to do to be cool. So when you think about trying to make a page in your website or a blog findable in Google, you got to look like the cool kids that are already there, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about what are some of the key elements to looking like a cool kid. So when we break down a piece of content, this is what we have to think about. First of all is, so if I'm going to take just like, remember back to a term paper when you were a kid, when you were in high school or college and you had to write a term paper. So think about every page on the website is like a research document. We're going to be Google, we're going to be a professor, and we're going to see if this page meets the cool kid standards or the top 10 standards. So the first thing we have to do, of course, is the title. The title is going to have the keyword in it. That's what that term paper is about. Ooh, Google's like, yes, I love that. You told me what it was in the title, so keyword in the title. Then we have the headline. Remember, this is the H1 or the headline. This is what packs a punch, right? This is like the big, the big statement that says, here's why you should read this because it's awesome. So that's the headline. Then if we're gonna get it, we're really gonna write a good term paper, we have got to have some body copy. Now what's interesting is that Google is very nervous Nelly. It wants to make sure that you're gonna start with that concept and end with that concept. So we're gonna start with the keyword here first then we have all of our other content, and then we're going to end with a keyword at the end. We call it hugging the content, right? We want to make sure that we're hugging the top and the bottom. And then, of course, we're not going to paint this with keywords. We're going to make sure that we just add the keywords and the keyword variants evenly down the page so that Google can see, great, I see you got it in the title, I see you got it in the headline, I see that this body copy is clearly about that keyword. Now, a couple more advanced features would be to have images. Okay, so I've got one image here. I've got two images here. This is going to be named keyword1.jpg. This is keyword2.jpg, right? We want everything to be pointing toward that keyword and that keyword optimization. And then finally, we've got the links. So think about what does a link mean in a term paper? Think about how does that translate? Well, a link, you might have a word that's underlined and linked that goes to another site. This might be a, a word that is linked and goes to another site. These are citations. Remember that bibliography? 
bibliography. So what you're doing is you're saying, just because you say it doesn't make it true. So you've got to be able to show up to Google and look like a cool kid. You know how to dress, what to eat, where to sit in the bus, right? You know all these different elements. And this is what makes you findable one keyword at a time. So I like to think about world domination by keyword phrase. I want you to focus on one keyword and when you see yourself in multiple positions on that same keyword in search results, then you could move to another keyword. So remember though, you gotta look like a cool kid, follow the rules, but bring your unique gift and thought leadership to that concept. The next part I wanna share with you is about world domination by keyword phrase. So it's not about ranking for a thousand keywords, it's maybe ranking for 20, because those 20 are so perfect for you. So SEO historically has meant that you get one position on the page. So let's say this is our search result page on Google. Okay. Here's our dub dub dub. Google.com. Okay. So world domination by keyword phrase means yes, I'm going to optimize and I'm going to have one listing here that is my website. Now, there are still nine other search results here. There's 10 results on a search result page. I wanna see how many I can take away from a competitor. So as you start getting clarity, now I'm gonna write a blog post for that same keyword. Okay, blog, there's one, there's two. Now I've pushed off the two at the bottom of the search result pages. Now I'm going to do a video. Okay, now, ooh, look, now we got three spots on that search result page, I'm killing it. Then I'm gonna start making sure that I use, for the imagery, I'm gonna make sure I name images that keyword. And you'll see the Google images will come right here from how you've named those images. So now I've optimized a page on my website for that keyword, I've optimized a blog post for that keyword on my website, I've optimized a video for that, and now I've also optimized images. So what you'll see is I'm slowly pushing anyone else on this page off the bottom. So your end game is not just one organic listing, which is what this would be. They call it organic or natural or SEO, whatever. But that's, that's just the beginning. If you only have 20 keywords, you could then go back and say, okay, what are we gonna write on a blog for that? And what are we gonna create a video for? And what are we gonna ask images? Now here's some little ninja trick that works every time. Two, actually two. The first one is slideshare.net. Now slideshare is owned by LinkedIn. SlideShare is the Wikipedia of PowerPoints. If you go in and name that SlideShare deck, just create four pages. About us, services, testimonials, contact us, whatever you wanna do, it's like a brochure. Upload it to slideshare.net, call it the keyword you want to rank for. And boy, Google loves a SlideShare. It will rank usually between 24 to 48 hours. Really easy way to get right in there fast. The next one is Pinterest. So Pinterest is a visual search engine. It is not just girls with makeup and you know cooking recipes. It has expanded to be findable. Um, every single board you create in Pinterest is findable. So if you name a board that keyword and you put a bunch of images in there, then that's also gonna rank here. So how many spots do we have now? One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see how we're slowly dominating that keyword? So when someone comes to the site, you are the only game in town. You've got it knitted up, and because you were so focused, you are killing it one keyword at a time. That's the good stuff. It's really just taking its clues on who is the best thought leader, who has the best content. Get out there, start writing, don't worry about Googlebot, worry about the searcher first and Googlebot second. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the button and the bell so that you can get notified of our latest videos. Whoa.